Hello everyone, welcome back again to my channel. It's Megwanda for Travel. In this video, this is the continuation of my previous vlog, but the last part of our first day tour in Rome. We visited also one of the historical churches named Chiesa di San Luigi Francesi. One of the interesting churches also to to see, to visit, and discover. Let's go! Let's watch right now! Pasok natin ang intro! A little bit history of St. Louis of the French. Enclosed between the Pantheon and Piazza Navona, in the city center of Rome is the small church of St. Louis of the French, a true pearl of Baroque art famous the church for housing that important year 1589 artworks is a national like the National Gallery of French pieces by Rome. Caravaggio. It is an unmissable stop of any good walk around the streets of the city center of Rome, a hidden treasure that will take you back Follow me and let's go together to the discovery of this gem. The Church of St. Louis of the French was built since year 1518 to welcome the increasing French community in Rome, who by the end of the 15th century had only a small chapel and a hospital devoted to St. Louis, close to St. Andrea de la Valle. Thanks to the push by Giulio del Medici afterwards, Pope Clement VII, the construction of a new church started. It was built by Domenico Fontana following a project by Giacomo della Porta, and it was finished on October 8, 1589, when the Church of St. Louis of the French was sanctified. From an artistic point of view, the church is an exaltation of French through the representation of its saints and the most important historical characters from the facade that hosts the statues of Charlemagne, St. Louis, St. Clotilde, and St. John of Rouen. The interior divided into three naves with five chapels on each side and a rich central choir decorated with marbles as a true jubilation of Baroque art. In the second chapel of the right nave, is located the fresco stories of Saint Cecilia by Dominicino, while on the altar there is a copy by Guido Rinet at Saint Cecilia by Raphael. The church also hosts several famous old graves, among which the tomb of Pauline de Bermont, built by his lover Francois Rene de Chateaubriand and the tomb of Cardinal Francois Joaquin de Vernet, ambassador of King Louis XV and Louis XVI. Finally, on the choir above the entrance door, there is the precious organ built by Joseph Marclin in 1881 and equipped with three manuals of 56 notes and pedals of 30 notes with Barker Pneumatic Transmission, a real jewel. The Caravaggio and the Cantarelli Chapel The famous Cantarelli Chapel deserves a chapter by itself. Here, you will find the famous triptych by Caravaggio composed of the martyrdom of St. Matthew, the calling of St. Matthew and Angel, the chapel was named after Cardinal Matteo Contrell, then Italianized as Contrelli, who commissioned Miresi all three altarpieces focused on the figure of Saint Matteo. We can only be fascinated by the expressive force and by the beauty of those works, which represents an important turning point in the style of the great artists. The martyrdom of St. Matthew is the first painting by Caravaggio to the chapel. Compared to other works, this is more crowded 
with a tangle of bodies that refers to the mannerism. While the nudes are clearly inspired by Michelangelo's works. In the scene, the holy is overwhelmed by an Ethiopian soldier sent by King Hertakos to prevent him to continue his work of proselytism, while an angel leans out of a cloud to offer him his hand, the symbol of the martyrdom. The crowd around attends horrified and among people stands men with a beard and mustache, which could be the same Caravaggio. It should be noticed that the entire scene is warned by the dark. From this moment, Caravaggio will always use the dark background for his works. later, but the first version of the painting was rejected due to its excessive realism. Saint Matthew is represented with the appearance of an almost illiterate countryman, to which the angel must direct the hand to help him write. Of this work, lost in Berlin during the Second World War, only remain some photographic copies. In the second version of the painting, instead, Matteo is always shown composing his gospel with the angel, providing some tips. The saint is barefoot, almost to depict the trivial humanity of man that is also capable of being an instrument of the divine word. It must be said that to admire them in all their Splendor, it is necessary to insert into a suitable box a one euro coin which lights up the entire chapel. A price decidedly ridiculous to enjoy the unique spectacle of these absolute masterpieces of art. We know that after you have done this, you will want to not insert more than just one coin.
actually we don't have an idea about putting coins in the bag so that the light inside of the church will on but uh, as I seen inside there is a light on for sure some people are aware that uh, we need to put coins in the box so that the light inside will on so when I was checking about uh, the history of this chapel I just know about this putting coins in the box makes the lights on inside the church as you can see in the next video the lights is off maybe because there's no one putting coins inside the box I was thinking that it's going to close because it was late in the afternoon but I was wrong so that's for today's video guys I hope you liked my video and you enjoyed it please do not forget to click the like comment below and do not forget to subscribe my next vlog is our second day tour in Rome so that is surprise one of the famous part or place to visit in Rome see you there thank you so much everyone and God bless us happy weekend bye